pound bank on it You can put a hundred grand on it Anything I said I stamp on it Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and if this is your first time visiting, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So in this video, I'm basically going to be walking you guys through the process that I go through to make my key letters from start to finish. So these are my templates. I get my templates from the Creative Heart Studio. I personally feel like her templates are the best ones. I have tried other ones for designs that she does not actually have available in her storefront and I prefer hers so I know most sometimes you guys will see people putting together like puzzle pieces for these templates I do do that sometimes but because these are 40 inch marquees so a little over three foot um I am able to use blue paper so what blue paper is is Basically, the cheapest form of large-scale paper you can get from FedEx. And what you do is you go in and you bring the template. And they use the full-size file to scale back the overall size of the template and print it out in a full-size paper. They're about $8 each, um, or about 7 but of course, you can reuse the paper. So over time, you'll just see you start to build your inventory with these templates. But of course, if you have a regular printer, you could always just use the standard um, puzzle piece, basically puzzle piece option when it comes to doing the templates. So... For these letters, I'm going to be spelling out Nolan. So something to take into account when it comes to certain templates. For the most part, I stick exactly to the template. For But in this case, for the L, I do drag out the bottom of the L a little bit more when I'm making the actual marquee. So I cut the template properly, but then I always drag it out when I'm actually cutting it on the foam board, as you'll see um, later on in the video. So once I cut through all of these... I like to save them by rolling them up. Um, the paper is extremely, extremely thin. So I just try to roll them up and put them in a rubber band um, or put, put in a rubber band. So it's kind of like a tube, but you can use the tube mailing um, containers to store them as well. So I actually have to get more of those because I had them and then they like crinkled up. So I need to get more. But that's how I store these. And for the puzzle pieces, I store them in a binder. And you can check out my other vlog, um, well, other video. It's like a tutorial for a number four mosaic. You'll see how I actually um, store it when it's a puzzle piece. So these foam boards, I'm, I'm spilling all the tea in this video, so you're welcome. <laughs> but this um, foam board is 40 by 60 foam board. And you can get it at any, well, mo most local arts and crafts stores. And you always have to ask the framing section because they don't usually have these on the floor because they're so big. So you always, like, it, like say you go to Michael's, you want to go to the framing department and ask Michael's what's the largest foam board they have. But because this is a 40 by, a 40 inch um, mosaic, you could just use a regular sized foam board and just do that but it's up to you I like to just use the big foam boards because I have the inventory of them so I just you know trace it out and use that I just turn it so really and truly it's five foot high but I turn it and um basically lay them horizontally that's the word right like landscape and I just um trace them and cut them out so what I do is I trace out the template first as you could see that I just did in the video and then I go in with different rulers to get a really clean cut and I'm just using box cutters for some reason I feel like box cutters work better for me than exacto knives and exacto knives are a little pricey so box cutters to me are the more efficient um you know items when it comes to you know, if I would have to choose a material. So when I cut these out, I always have extra foam board left over 
save it. Never throw away your pieces of foam board unless you know for sure there's nothing you can do with the foam board at all. Save the pieces of foam board if you can. So I just go in and my hand is very, very steady just because I've been doing these for a very long time. Um, but I still use the ruler to line up with the pencil line that I created on the foam board, right? So when you're cutting these out, you have to be very mindful and just try to use the ruler every time there's a straight edge. If you want to just be lazy and cut it without the ruler, that's fine. But I'm very nitpicky and OCD when it comes to these things. I'm so my dog looks like he's like drunk, but he falls asleep standing up, so that's why he's like nodding off <laughs> like that, and then it's sped up, so it's making it look worse. Um so yeah, I like to use the ruler. So this ruler in particular, um, I rotate. So that ruler is like one of the Amazon rulers that you just type in large heavy duty ruler and you'll see it come up on there. Um, I like that because it can line up up against the board and it gives me a really, really straight cut. And I also use the Cricut rulers as well. I use the three inch Cricut rulers as a three, what is it, three inch? Yeah, three inch wide Cricut rulers as well as the six inch wide Cricut rulers. So I use both and the reason for that is just because sometimes when it comes to cutting the larger letters, it's easier to just kneel down on the um, six inch wide ruler. But in this case, it was smaller. They're smaller letters. So I was able to just use the three inch, right? Now you see I'm using my tiny ruler. So I use three different rulers when I'm making these things. And that's because I like precision. You don't have to do this, but that's just my preference. So as you can see, I messed up there with the L. And I sliced it at the exact um, part. The L I did not trace out because it's all straight lines. I didn't really need to. So I had to go back in and I had to recut that line. But because when I slice my foam board... I'm not slicing it all the way through the board. I slice it, not cut it. Um, so it gives me the leeway that if I mess up a little bit, I can go back in and adjust it. So for most of the time, so you will see that I follow exact to the template. But the, in this case, I just didn't like the way the template was just a little bulky on the top part of the L. So that's what made me slice it down a little bit. So now I'm going into cutting my strips. So the strips are basically the borders for the marquees. You can use any, you know, dimension you would like when it comes to doing the borders. But the way I teach it, because I do have virtual classes that are linked in the bottom of this video as well as in my bio and um, actually have them on sale right now. But... The way I do it and teach it is to do a three inch border. And that's just because I like the neatness and the daintiness of the marquee because there's no balloons going inside of them. So I like the smaller trim because I just feel like it looks better aesthetically. I do see that some people use four inch, they use five inch or they use six inch. It's up to you. It's just your preference. I would suggest to, you know, you don't map it out to see which one you prefer, but me personally, I like how the three inch looks. When it comes to doing my mosaics with the balloons inside, I do use five inch, I mean six inch for the border, right? So as you can see, I'm just going through and I cut it. I like to cut all my strips because it helps me move faster when I am putting together my mosaics. I can I notice that it slows me up a lot when I try to cut as I go but um, basically a rule of thumb that you can go by is for the most part for three foot anywhere between three foot and 40 inch marquees or most uh, marquees you would use or mosaic same thing um, when it comes to this like the rule of thumb you would use about three so just prep three per marquee or mosaic um, for four foot, I would say to prep anywhere between three and four, just depending on the complexity, um, complexity, you guys know I'm Esau, I don't know, I can't, I have to say it every video, 
the complicatedness of the letter, you'll know how much to cut, right? Um, but for five foot, I always just cut five just because the letters are so big that for the most part, they do use more. So what I do is I go in and I measure each piece of the strip. It looks like I'm flying through this and that's because I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been doing these since 2020, so it's going on four years of me making these same letters, same numbers. So I just fly when it comes to doing them. So what I do, which you don't have to do, is I do not cut my strips. I slice them and just keep measuring them so I can do a folding method versus doing cutting the whole strip out. Um, but sometimes, um, if I'm in a rush, I do just cut the strip just because it helps me move a little bit faster. I just like the neatness of, you know, folding it over. So that's what you're seeing there while you'll see like bends and stuff. Um, that's why I do that. And I like that method, but it is a little complicated to do when you're first starting out. So don't hesitate to just measure and cut. So when you're first starting out doing these, just measure the um, strip against the board and cut it exactly and cut it all the way through and glue it on. All you want to do is make sure that you're holding on to the glue to make sure that it is um, stable. So I use hot glue. Some people use low temperature glue. Um, the glue gun that I use is by Gorilla Glue and you can get it from Amazon or Joann's and with those um, glue guns, there's a temperature setting that allows you to go high or low. So I do high when it comes to doing, you know, that around the border. But then you'll see later on in the video when I'm installing the actual lights, I do put it on low. So I just get to adjust back and forth based on what I am doing. Sorry, I'm so thirsty. I'm trying to do this like clean, straight through voiceover, but I'm parched. Okay, so I'm back and my dog is back as well. But yeah, so basically I go through each and every letter and that's why these things cost what they cost because I have to hand make all of them. Um, I want to say this took me start to finish about four hours um, to make five letters and that includes cutting the template, tracing, cutting out the base, cutting the strips, putting the strips on the base, putting the lights inside of the marquees and measuring them out, making sure they're the right sizes and putting on the base. So for me, that's really, really good. But obviously starting off, don't feel crazy if it takes you longer than that because like I said, this is an acquired skill that, you know, you get after a while of doing these things. So for these, I charge, when it comes anywhere between three foot and 40 inch for the marquees, I charge um, anywhere between 75 to 95 a letter. It all depends on if it's indoor, outdoor, what the letters are, how many letters there are, if it's numbers, if it's letters, there's a lot of things that goes into factor um, when it comes to making these. That's why I would just give you guys the price range of $75 to $95. When it comes to um, the forefoot, I charge anywhere between $85 and $105. And then when it comes to the five foot, I charge anywhere between $85, $95 and hundred and fifteen dollars for certain letters like M or W I do charge an extra fee for because I do have to use double the material if it is an outdoor event I have to charge extra because I have to make the bases in a different way than I would usually um, make them um, I basically make them with the same thin foam board these foam boards are like 3 16th um, when it comes to width wise, but if it is an outdoor thing and you know, I suspect there would be more wind 
or just a little bit more chaos around the marquees because they are foam board, I do one of two things. I either outsource it um, to Alphalet, which is a very popular um, marquee brand, well, like franchise, and that's because they use steel letters. So I actually have a video coming up, a tutorial, where I did balloons around Old Baby, like everybody knows about the Old Baby marquees and like the Marry Me ones and all that. So yeah, so if it's something where I'm like, uh-uh, it's by a pool, it's windy, all of that, I just go ahead and outsource it. It's not really worth it for me to collect a little piece of money when, you know, I know that the client's gonna be calling me like, hey, they're blowing down or hey they won't stand up or hey or whatever I don't know just don't call me after so I just avoid all that and pass off the job I feel like that has come with just you know over time understanding that there's enough money to go around there's enough blessings to go around there's enough um, fruit that's what I would call it fruit to go around you don't have to take every single job. If the job doesn't make sense for you and your skill set, and if it doesn't make sense for you and your business, or if you're not just not comfortable, don't take it. Because the headache that comes along with it will never be worth whatever you are compensated for it. So I like to outsource or I charge the extra money I need to charge if I need to build like a thin wood base for the back of the... Um, marquees so with this one i want to explain what i'm doing here i'm just slicing again there's a difference between slice and cut so i'm just slicing them to measure it out um i measure everything like i said you don't have to but i like to measure everything out so i slice my marquee uh marquees when it comes to creating the border that's how i get the foam board to curve so you can see there's a loop on the top and a loop on the bottom, but it goes straight on the sides. So that's all I did there, measured it out, sliced it, and usually always have like a little piece of gap um, when it comes to doing like the zero and like certain letters that have that like you know, insert, that middle insert, like B's and R's and stuff like that. So what I like to do is just take a white piece of duct tape and just basically secure it on you can't really see it because the lights are so bright inside of the letters you won't really be able to tell so that's the good part about um these marquees being white um but obviously if you are doing them colored you could just use clear or you could just use whatever color duct tape you are doing for the marquees but spray painting these marquees is not something that I like to do um I have done it in the past and it just wasn't really my favorite look um I would say you're better off just painting it with acrylic paint instead of spray painting it because the spray paint can warp the board if you are not doing it very very carefully um but that's again something that somebody would have to pay me an additional fee to do um yeah so I just kind of steer clear of it people don't really ask so much for it anymore but before they used to ask for it a lot and I had to nip it in the bud because the letters they run or they're just very sticky or it's messy or it's just annoying so I just leave it alone I don't like doing it um so yeah so if you're ever wondering how people get the foam board to curve it's because we're taking the ruler, or you don't have to use a ruler, um, and just making slices. They're about one inch slices. I just use a ruler as a rule of thumb to make it easier. Um, so here I'm just inserting the back. So I use push lights. You can use marquees with bulbs and other things like that, but I like to use push lights because I like that I could just put the batteries in them and turn them on and the client can turn them on themselves or turn them off um what i'm doing here is i'm putting on the back but i'm not putting on the light and the reason why i do that is because i like to measure it out i'm using basically like those little like wall laser levelers that's just something from like home depot um 
that I use to make sure the lights are straight. But obviously, I don't know what happened with me in this A. I messed up a little bit and I did not notice until I was at the venue. Of course, the client did not care. Nobody cared. It looked beautiful. But like I said, I'm OCD and I'm very meticulous when it comes to this. I blame my aunt for that because... She's like that, and I feel like it just rubbed off on me. But I'm not as crazy as her because that lady sandpapers her borders. I don't do all that. I'm not that crazy. But that's where it's, you know, the OCD-ness comes from for sure. So as you can see, I obviously use the laser the whole time. I just rearrange it until it looks normal. But I try to keep about an average amount, like kind of like the same amount of lights per letter you don't want to put too much lights in one letter and then there's less lights in the other so i just try to keep them all like within like a two range like a two difference range so like this one here has nine i wouldn't put any less i wouldn't put any more than that in any of them but this one has a lot so with the letters Anytime you have the same letter or number in the same setup, you want to make sure you line them up because even though things are DIY, you don't necessarily want them to look DIY and that's a very easy way for it to look like it was DIY by having a mismatch amount of lights or mismatch placement for a duplicate letter in the same setup. So once i have these glued on i use low temperature glue for this when it's your first time opening them you'll see that has a sticky back still put the hot glue or low temp glue um here i'm just twisting the lights on i use the amazon basics uh lights just because they are very affordable they're AAA batteries and i never really um you reuse lights unless it's for like um something i know they only use it for two hours but for the most part I always just change it just because I don't like to take the risk of them dimming out early. They do last about 24 hours, but they do slowly get dimmer and dimmer as they are on. So to avoid that, I just try to use new batteries every time. That's why I use Amazon batteries because they are very cheap. So they're just Amazon basics, AAA batteries, nothing special. So moving on. Um, well, those I take extra of and I put them in my toolbox. So in my toolbox, I have basically everything I could possibly need. And I like doing this because this way I get to always bring things that I may not necessarily use every setup, but I always have it with me. And for the most part, if it's like a small setup, I just take up the, um, clear part. Cause this is a three part, um, well, it's a four part toolbox from Home Depot by the Rigid brand. But usually I always bring these three parts. So it's the bottom with the wheels, the clear top, and then the middle piece. But the clear top is what has majority of what I need consistently. Rubber bands, 260s, um, uh, magnets, tape, scissors, just random things like that, like paper clips, stuff like that. So I try to keep that all in the top so I can just take that. So if you see, I was using like these little screws and I was organizing them. That's because I'm using my ring. So I haven't used this in a really long time, but this used to be my go-to. When I first started, doing out, started out doing balloons, I was not that good at, you know, just curating the design so these rings really helped me with that and i was kind of excited for her to ask for this because nobody really asked for them anymore but it's so simple and it's cute and it's very budget friendly i do rent the um rings out for about 75 dollars if it's a shape that i do not have i just get it from somebody else so i do anywhere between 75 and 95 and as you can see once you build the balloons on it you can't even see the gold ring it depends on the design. Sometimes the client does want a piece of the gold or the ring to show and I can do that as well. She just wanted this particular style and I really like doing these because it's like 
you starting out, you don't necessarily know how you want to shape things. So to just be able to put it in a garland and throw it up here and just build on it. And you have a sturdy base that you can just build on and continuously build on. It's really nice. So I would say if you're starting out doing balloons, this is definitely something I would suggest to start off doing. So here I'm just basically spacing out the letters and usually i would use the um bricks like they're like these small bricks from lowe's but i didn't do that in this case because we are indoor all i did was put duct tape so alert this is a major alert i do not ever do this i do not do these boxes i do not fill these boxes i do not buy these boxes for clients they are from amazon and they are flimsy but this is a family friend of ours and obviously I do things where I go above and beyond for certain people that I know I can trust. I knew that she, she first of all, they bought the box and they just asked me to put the balloons in it. I wasn't going to charge them extra for something like this because there's no point in it. But I know she's not going to call me and be like, oh, it's flimsy. Oh, da, da, da. So that's why I did them for her because family friend again I made exceptions here I am she bought pompous from she in and I'm just blow drying them because that helps it be like just you know like a little frizzy so when I'm sticking them inside of the garland I like the way it looks more um I noticed that they like they just look more open instead of having that straight kind of look I probably could have blow dried it a little bit more but there's something, I don't know what it is that people spray on them. I couldn't remember if it was hairspray or what. I do not have it, um, so that's something I need to add to my toolbox. But that's why I didn't put them in. But it still looks really cute. But those are from Sheen, and they were actually, like, a pretty good quality. So I would definitely suggest um, people utilizing those. So here I am just pushing on the lights. Like I said, they are push light. So all you do is hold the back or hold the base and push on the light, and the lights are on. So this was the overall finished look. It came out super cute and it was super simple. They did the tablescape themselves and did a really good job. That's not something I require clients to get from me, but this is a really cute budget friendly option for your next event. Knees, cup. All right, so can I get all the winners to stay on the floor? 
If you did lose, I'm sorry. You guys gotta go sit back down. We're gonna get shoulders, head, knees, head, knees, shoulder, head, knees, shoulder, head, shoulder. What? Head, shoulder, head, shoulder, head, cup. So we're gonna do uh, shoulders, head, shoulders, knees, head, shoulders, knees, shoulder, knees, what? Knees, shoulder, 